Welcome to the thrilling adventures of Admiral Balderdash. Chapter 3, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. <laughs> You be sure to have all those spuds peeled for tonight, Potato Boy. I understand. I don't have to remind you how much the captain values his supper. Uh, I won't disappoint anyone. Don't worry. You had better not. And after you're done with that, you can swab the poop deck. We call it the poop deck because we all thought if I took a poo on it and you had to clean it, that would be really funny. Hysterical. Just get back to work. My name is Pendleton Magpie Bradshaw, and for as long as I can remember, this is what my life used to be. For years, I was a slave to a pirate king named Captain Blood. He was the most terrifying, most ruthless pirate on all the seven seas. When I was an infant, he and his crew of sea wolves pillaged my island and kidnapped me from my family. Blood's reasoning was he needed someone expendable, someone who could do all the chores no one else wanted to do. My days were spent polishing floors and peeling potatoes. I don't think anyone even bothered to learn my name. They would all just refer to me as... Potato Boy. Captain Blood, you're early! I was hungry. Do you have my supper ready? Uh, of course. Here you are, sir. Is it all right, sir? It's fine. My pleasure. If I may be excused, I was going to swap the poop deck. Stay. I was hoping to speak with you. Captain? How long have you been living on this ship now? Six? Seven years? Six years, 241 days, sir. Well, that's a rather exact number. What? You don't like it here? No, no, Captain! You don't like having a place to sleep? That's not it! Don't like I... eating three square meals a day? The way I see it, doing a little dirty work here and there is a fair exchange for keeping that head on your shoulders, potato boy. Yes, Captain Blood. <laughs> You're so scared right now. Look, the point I'm trying to get at is you've been here a while, and I think it's about time you proved yourself. What do you mean? Peeling potatoes and roasting squab is one thing, but how would you feel about trying a new recipe? Oh, really? I'd love to. In fact, I was hoping to try something Child. like a quiche, or maybe some crab cakes Child. one time, with some lemon dressing. Child, you're missing the point. You see this bottle I've got in my pocket? What is it? This is the purest form of poison. Venom drained from the front fangs of a hydra. If even the smallest drop were to be swallowed, it would kill a grown man in mere seconds. Which head? What? Well, hydras have a lot of heads. I was just wondering which one you pulled the poison from. Uh, the third one. Relative to what? The first one. Captain, I don't understand Listen, how I... Listen, potato boy. What's important is that any son of a bitch that has a taste of this venom is getting a one-way ticket to Davy Jones' locker. Understand? Yes, sir. But why are you telling me this? Tomorrow night, the Sea Wolves and I will feast with Captain Blackbeard and his crew. He's invited us onto his ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge to usher in a new offering of peace between our two ships. Aw, oh, that's nice. It certainly is. It's too bad you're going to help us poison his entire crew. <laughs> what? With the reputation Blackbeard's got, he's sure to have a shit ton of treasures on that ship. Be a hell of a lot easier if we could kill them all without getting our Sunday clothes all messy. Captain Blood, this is a massacre. I was afraid you'd say something like that. Here's the thing. If you don't make Blackbeard his big bowl of poison soup, if I don't walk away with that treasure, I will find you, lift you up by the hair, and pour this entire bottle down your throat. 
that sound any better to you? Uh, no, sir. No one stands in the way of Captain Blood and his treasure. You remember that. Here, take this bottle. Thank you for the supper, Potato Boy. You get a good night's rest. You've got a big day tomorrow. It was on that very night that I made my escape from Blood. In an effort to avoid taking the lives of other men, I flung myself into the sea, sailing away on my barrel of potatoes. It was not long after when I first met Admiral Balderdash, and not long after that, where our paths would once again cross with Captain Blood. Who the devil is Captain Blood? Who's Captain Blood? He's only the most fearsome pirate alive! Well, what's he doing all the way out here? Most likely searching for Penny. Come, lad, help me move this barrel. Yes, sir. I don't understand. Why is he? I used to be part of his crew before I made my escape. It's how our paths eventually crossed. Hop in, boy. You should be able to hide here. Eustace? When you came to me asking for my help, I don't recall you ever mentioning that a whole crew of pirates would be chasing us. Sister, Pendleton was just a potato peeler. How was I to know they'd put so much effort into searching for such a person? No offense, lad. None taken, sir. Oh, gods. Just look at the size of that ship. It must be twice as large as ours. Ha! Where's your spirit of adventure, sister? Boulder dashes are not easily... Bested. Don't you understand the severity of all this? There's only three of us. We're extremely outgunned. When those pirates board our ship, it's going to turn into a bloodbath. We'll all be dead before ever setting foot on the Red Marsh. And just where do you think you're going? I'm going to save our lives. Oh, really? How? By hiding underneath the hatch? What's going on, sir? Oh, I can't see anything! Emily went to the hold below, probably cowering like a chicken. I must say, I'm a little scared myself, Admiral. Well, there's no need for that, Pendleton. I believe that blood is going to board this ship. So just keep quiet and let me do the talking. Oh, aye, aye. Remember that he's only searching for you. There's no possibility he even knows who I am. Are you Admiral Balderdash? Oh, shit. No? Oh, sorry. I thought you might be. You know, for the better part of a month now, I've been sailing around looking for the man that goes by that name. It's exhausting. I beg your pardon. I'm Captain Blood, and these are the Sea Wolves. <laughs> Someone toss that man overboard, please. Hey, wait, fellas, what are you doing? Hey, you're uh, away! Now, what was it we were talking about? Uh, someone named Balderdash, who sounds great, but is not me. That's right, thanks. Anyway, this man, mm. Balderdash, he took something away from me. Something that was not his to take. So I've been looking all around for this man who, frankly, fits your description. Fat. Old, I... grey beard, Captain Crunch looking ass uniform. But we could never find him. Someone mentioned to me that he'd be headed for the Red Marsh. So we'd just sit back, wait, and take over all the ships passing through here, figuring we'd sooner or later catch our man. Whenever we found out Balderdash wasn't around, it sort of broke our hearts. So we just had to kill everybody on board to raise the spirits, you know. After a while, we were starting to lose hope. Starting to think we'd never find him. But I saw your ship in the distance. And I told myself, one last try, Captain. And it seems I was right to trust myself. Because I think you're just the man I've been looking for. Admiral Balderdash. Uh, now, no need to be hasty. Hope you said your prayers. Oh, no! Penny! No! Oh, oh, damn it. Please, Captain Blood! Oh, I'll go back with you. Just don't hurt anyone! God, are my eyes playing tricks on me? Hey, everybody, look. It's Potato Boy. <laughs> Just what are you doing all the way out here, boy? We thought you'd be shark shit by now, seeing as how you jumped overboard. I'm alive. I can certainly see that. 
You know, you were the best damn potato peeler we had on that ship. We had Peter over here take your job after you escaped. <laughs> yeah. Worst potatoes I ever had in my life, swear to God. Peter, you're terrible. Wait, what? Well, I'm here now, all right. You finally found me. Now, take me back to the ship, and I'll peel all the potatoes you want. Just... just don't hurt the Admiral. Little man, you think I've been breaking my back looking around for you? Though... Now that I think about it, you did cost me Blackbeard's treasure by escaping. But I'll let bygones be bygones. I want you, Balderdash. The name Queen Jillian ring any bells? The Siren? Ding, ding, ding. That Siren was my girlfriend. What? And you shot her in the mouth. Then a big-assed sea monster gobbled her up, and now she's dead. How would you know that? Because she didn't die right away. In her last moments, deep within that dragon's belly, she called out to me. You see the shell here, an enchanted gift from her, makes us able to talk to each other from across the seas. And she told me a lot about you, Admiral. Told me all about how you'd be heading straight to the Red Marsh. So, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to take back our potato boy, and then I'm going to murder everyone on this ship. Not so fast, Captain. Emily! Well, who do we have here? My name is Emily Balderdash. And if you value your lives, then you and your men will get back onto your ship and sail as far away from us as you can. I never did like killing women, Lady B. So why don't you keep your mouth shut and mind your business, unless you want to lose that pretty head of yours? <laughs> I wouldn't be speaking so rudely if I were you. Oh, yes. And why is that, sweetheart? Because you're standing on 200 pounds of explosives. What's that? My ship! Let's move. There's a lifeboat near the stern. Great plan, ma'am. No, no, bad plan! You destroyed my ship! I'm sorry. Would you rather they have done it after killing you? What kind of a question is that, woman? Yes! Eustace, move! Emily grabbed Pendleton by the arm, rushed away, and disappeared into a cloud of smog. My vision was fading. Ash and smoke permeated my surroundings. But I still pressed forward. The once great pot-bellied mermaid was reduced to nothing in a flash of light. Though I couldn't see exactly where I was trudging, I could hear a faint voice in the distance, and I followed its call. <coughs> oh, you made it! Where's Emily? I'm over here! Everyone get inside. The three of us all crashed into our lifeboat, eyes bloodshot and gasping for oxygen. Though our hearts all thundered like a drum, my sister sliced a rope with her sword, and our vessel fell into the sea. We need to row! With heavy arms, Emily and I used the last of our strength to row away from the two ships. Our situation seemed to be looking bright, but Penny caught notice of something in the distance. Oh, that doesn't look good. It was a storm! The three of us all tried to shift our direction, but the winds were too strong. The sky turned black, and we were pulled into the cyclone. The gales lifted us from the ocean. Our vessel was thrashed round in the sky like a dog. Stomach weak, head spinning. I was going to collapse. If this was truly to be the end, I desired only one last look at my ship. I leaned over, looked down, and there, on the mast, I saw him. The pirate captain's gaze pierced my soul. Though his face was bloodied, the pirate flashed a grin and began laughing hysterically. He was swallowed by smoke, and then everything went black. When I came to my senses, I noticed that I was on neither land nor sea, but that of an expansive swampy mire. My head rested upon a heap of rotting fish carcasses, and my boat lay stuck in a bog a few yards back. Emily! I was completely alone. I called out for my friends, but to no avail. The sun was absolutely blistering. 
Without any shade, I knew I would surely perish. It was then, in the distance, I caught sight of a large mound. Perhaps I would find some shelter there. Uh, right. Well, off I go then. I walked off for what seemed like a lifetime. In an effort to cool off, I had to toss my coat and hat to the side. When I finally arrived at my destination, my spirits lifted! A watering hole! Using my hands, I lapped up as much of the cooled water as I could. <laughs> oh, gods! What the devil is that? As I sat down to drink, a bizarre form slowly emerged from the pool. Though its shape was that of a man, there was something very strange about it. The creature's skin was soft and moist, while its hands and feet were webbed. Its unwinking, monstrous eyes were on either side of its head, and looked directly into mine. Well, hello there. Ah! Oh, you, you got me. Great shot. Good lord. Uh, oh. All right, okay, yep. You're still shooting me. Charlie, Tuna, why won't you die? Okay, I'm just going to take that from you. Look, I am so sorry that I scared you. I just thought that I'd come out and introduce myself. My name is Merc. Merc Fishbird. What can I call you? Well, I'm... Uh, Admiral Balderdash. Well, Mr. Balderdash, it is certainly nice to meet you. You must not be from around here. Nobody I know stays out this late. I was shipwrecked here, so... Wait, why do you say that? Don't you know where we are? This is the... Oh, Nelly. Oh, <laughs> hi, honey. I know that it is very dangerous to be out here this late, but I was just trying to tell my friend here that... Well, that's just not nice. Listen, Flounder. I've been separated from two of my friends, a young boy and a much older woman. If they could be in danger, I need to know. Just tell me where the devil I am. All righty then, Mr. Bossy. You're in none other than the Red Marsh. You better get inside before the Dunkleosteus makes his rounds. This... This is the Red Marsh? Oh golly, death approaches. Hey, come now, we need to move. But, my friends! I may have a surprise for you when we get back to my hovel. But we've got to get going. Now. I latched onto the creature's back as he leapt into the drinking hole. We swam directly to the floor, where a sunken pirate ship lay. Merc pulled back a large piece of wood, and we crept inside. Well, here we are. Home sweet home. Admiral Eustace! Oh, thank heavens, you're both safe! Those are the people you've been looking for. That's great! Could you imagine if you didn't know these people? Your friends would still be, like, dead! But, but no, no, that's great, that's great. What happened to you both? I was with Pendleton when I awoke. The winds must have tossed us from the boat. And that's how we were separated from you. We were on the other side of the marsh when Mr. Fishburn rescued us earlier today. We owe you our lives. Thank you. Well, of course. Emily, though our methods of travel were a bit unconventional, we did it! Fishburn tells me that this here is the Red Marsh. We're so close to killing the Dunkleosteus. I can practically feel its head in my hands. Eustace, you can't be serious. We used all of our explosives to escape blood. We have no resources. What are you talking about? We have my pistol, don't we? Boulder Darshers wouldn't be caught dead without a flintlock. Forget it. Not only is there a giant monster out there, but now Captain Blood is looking for us too. If he survived that blast, there's no way he's letting us walk away. I honestly cannot believe you. Let me get this straight. Not only do you destroy my ship without telling me, but now you sit here saying you won't even help me finish the fight- For God's sake, Eustace. It's a ship. Learn to let it go. I'd been sailing the mermaid for 40 years! You owe me! Now just wait a second there. Nobody is going anywhere. Not until you have finished recovering from that bullet wound, Missy. What's he talking about? Someone shot you? It's nothing. Just drop it. Let me see. Uh, oh. Your shoulder. Blood must have gotten in a shot or two after the blast. Emily. 
Your necklace, it's gone. Eustace, I need you to listen to me. I know we set out with a job to do, but I don't want to do this anymore. I'm hurt. I'm tired. And I want to go home and be with my wife. Please, brother. But our lifeboat was destroyed. How would we ever find our way back? Well, Mr. Fishburne said something about there being an abandoned sailboat on the other side of the marsh. As long as we head out in the morning, we shouldn't run into any monsters. Great thinking, lad. It's decided then. Sister, we'll all wait here for you to make a recovery. Then, when the time is right, we'll all venture out, kill the Dunkley Osteus, then use the sailboat to escape before Captain Blood ever realizes where we are. Just forget about the Dunkley Osteus, Eustace. Emily, please, we're so close I and said I know. No! Don't you get it? The three of us are lucky to be alive. It's a miracle that we even washed up in the same place. You can't continue to search for this thing. Not while Captain Blood is expecting us out there. We need to get as far away from this place as possible. This laughing in the face of adversity routine may work for you, but you need to understand our lives are at risk. I'm your sister. I took a bullet for you. Don't you care? Of course I care for you! I have a wife back home. What would have happened if I never came back? Think about Pendleton. This boy here is twelve years old, and he would follow you to hell and back. But you should never ask him to do that. The only reason you're so adamant about killing this creature is because some old geezer in some old tavern called you a coward. And do you know what I think? I think, deep down, you believe him. So go out and kill this creature in the name of adventure or whatever excuse you're telling yourself. But you're not fooling anyone, and I'm not going. I'm staying right here. And if you bring Penny along with you, you're an even bigger fool than I thought. (sighs) I'm disappointed in you, Emily. Penny, I'm heading out to kill the Dunkley Osteus first thing in the morning. Either come along or don't. I don't care. Admiral Balderdash, you know I'd why I... Hello, everyone. Thank you again so much for listening. Uh, as always, Admiral Balderdash was played by Dave Quinn. Denise Melody played Penny Bradshaw. Lucas Webley played Captain Blood. Helen O'Connor was Emily Balderdash. Jackson Pels was Merck. Fletcher Armstrong and Zion Jang both lended their voice to some of the pirates. All sounds were found on freesound.org, as well as Pond 5, and the music was all composed by me. So, cool. Thank you guys again so much. Peace out.